Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is the regular meeting of the Public Works Advisory Board. It is Wednesday, July 20th, and we're here at the Veterans Memorial Building. Um, so we do have a quorum. And so I will call the meeting to order. We are missing Stephen Shively, who uh, is on vacation. But we do have enough members to proceed. So we'll start with a moment of silence. Thank you. Any announcements? Um, I'm sure everybody knows about this, but uh, um, everybody can look forward to making a decision on the November ballot for measure, what's called Measure J now. The um, uh, self-help initiative will be on, on the ballot for a countywide half-cent sales tax. So um, you can look forward to more information um, at probably multiple venues regarding that uh, and to uh, review the issue and uh, um, uh, make your decisions on that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> no? All right. Uh, we do not have any presentations, so we will open up public comment for any items that are not on our agenda. Uh, please come forward. Welcome. Good evening, folks. Ken Vesterfeld, resident of Morro Bay. Um, first of all, thank you for what you do. I'm well aware of what it's like to be on committees in, in the city and appreciate what your time uh, that it takes. Uh, second, um, August the 2nd, uh, 5 to 7 p.m. at Cloisters Park is called National Night Out. So uh, the police department of Morro Bay is going to be sponsoring a barbecue. So drop by. Um, it's uh, election time, so maybe some of the people who are going to be running for office will be there. And talking about the police department, again, I want to reiterate how uh, wonderful it has been for uh, people to drop by the police department or make calls or send cards uh, for the respect and the support uh, for the police department. Uh, yesterday, I called a friend of mine who is a police officer in Baton Rouge, and he has lost three, and possibly another one uh, may not make it. So uh, it's very, very scary, and they're very tense there right now. Um, what I really would like to come to is to remind people that the city council and city manager are considering outsourcing the police department. Um, I was on a ad hoc committee several years ago in several months, and it's just cost prohibitive. The only way they can do that is to lower the level of service. We are already the lowest paid police department in San Luis Obispo County. So that's the only way, in my opinion, that they can have the same level of service, which is probably minimum uh, what we have because of our lack of officers in town. So on August the 9th, it's gonna be on the agenda for city council, um, or you can email your thoughts to, to the city council and the city manager. Uh, I also have a petition that can be signed uh, asking the city council not to outsource that. There are several of us in the city who are taking up those petitions. Uh, anyone can call me at 805-235-8708 and I will come to your home if you wish to sign. So uh, again, I hope everybody in the city is going to pay attention to what may happen. Um, again, they're going to be looking at it or talking about it at the August the 9th City Council meeting here at the Betts Hall. So I appreciate everything you do. Thank you very much, and good luck on uh, hopefully 41 and, uh, and Main Street. Uh, yeah. will be better here right. in the future. Okay. Thanks right. again for listening to me. Appreciate yeah. you. And thank you, Ken, and for your volunteer police work, because I know you put in many, many hours. So we appreciate it. Thank you, Ken. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Can I, uh, has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes of the last meeting? And any recommendations for changes? No. Can I have a motion to approve? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, David. And a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Chris. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, the next item is the director's report, and I, has everybody had an opportunity to look at the director's report? 
And do we have any questions or comments or anything we'd like further information about? Do I start with David? I'm fine. You're fine, Jan? Mine are just little clarifications or for information. Under the bicycle alternative transportation, this says staff has submitted an active transportation program grant proposal to build the final phase of Morrow Creek multi-use trail connecting the bike and pedestrian path from the bridge north to Morrow Bay High School. Um, how soon do you expect to, to when you pre present a grant, or how, what's the time that it takes to get a response? And then is this, do we have the money to do this, or is that the next thing we have to get money for? So the grant application was submitted in the end of July? No, the end of uh, June. And Caltrans expects to um, have their initial recommendations for projects in October. Then it has to go to the California Transportation Commission for award of that money in, at their December meeting. So we'll, everybody will have final notice in um, November. So the, I'm going to um, state kind of realities of, we, I just came from a Slowcock DTAC meeting, so they updated us on, on this item. The state received almost $1 billion in uh, grant applications for $240 million uh, worth of uh, money that's available um, for them. Now, District 5, which we're a part of, hasn't fared well over the years, so we're thinking that maybe it's our turn. So there's a little bit of hope there. We have a really good project, and it, uh, it connects a previously funded project to another previously funded project. So um, um, we have our fingers crossed. Um, it's uh, a very economical um, uh, project. So um, we're, we're hoping in the new year um, we'll receive a little love from the state for that project. So if we get the love, <laughs> Is that grant enough to pay the expenses of it? Or no, it requires a city match um, to do that. So 20% uh, match is what it is. So it's about, what, 100 and something thousand um, dollars that we'll, we'll be matching um, with city funds. And Caltrans, or not Caltrans, Slowcog is providing seed money for a lot of these um, funds. It just depends how many projects are awarded, how much money Slowcog has to um, help us out with the match. And then, <laughs> last case scenario, if all of those other things don't come, will, will this Project J, what is it? Measure J. Measure J. Will the money from there come to help projects like that? It could be used for that. Um, uh, there's the local portion that it would be, be allowed to be used for that. So it's, it would be it needed to be budgeted by city council, um, the expenditures of those, those funds, and uh, you know, prioritized for that use. Right. That, yeah. That's yeah. Those, so the the regional projects have a, a set aside. So the Morro Bay Cayucas Connector uh -huh. is one of the named projects. So that project should Measure J pass would be funded. Um, but the smaller projects are part of the uh, uh, local community's decisions to on how to spend to their J. own local money. So the bottom line is. In reality, this is a feasible thing, something we could expect maybe in the next three or four years. I, I think so, and I'm hoping sooner rather than later because there is that gap there uh, mm -hmm. between the high school and where you cross the bridge, where you're, um, yeah. it's a lot of rough pavement and not very wide that you have to go through to uh, almost ride that every day. So I, uh, I get to I uh, lot, so exper I uh, experience it a lot. <laughs> okay, thank you, Rob. Chris, any questions, comments? No, no questions. Stu? Uh, Rob, does, where does that money come from? Is it out of our general funds, the matching? Measure, uh, measure Q funding would be appropriate or general fund, yes. Okay, thanks. 
Okay, I uh, just thought maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about the skate park that was an impromptu skate park that the kids apparently put together and uh, just what the status of that is and uh, kind of fill us in about that. So um, the city's um, teen center, which is at um, on Itascadero Road um, near the high school, um, has a skate park out front. Um, there's also a old miniature golf course in the back. And pretty much the only back of the teen center that is used for activities is kind of the patio area. I have a little basketball hoop out there and um, it's sometimes used for gatherings from what I understand. But the skate park looked very attractive, or the um, miniature golf course looked very attractive to some to convert to a skate park. So in the off hours, um, some enterprising uh, young men and women um, converted much of the miniature golf area to skating. Um, and I think some of the parents may have helped a little bit. Uh, and they did it with the idea this stuff would stay there because they, they poured concrete, uh, mixed concrete on site. So they had some um, uh, quarter pipes that they had put in. Unfortunately, um, uh, cities are in uh, the position of assessing risks. Um, and this was a, skateboarding is a fairly high risk, we all know that, um, um, but the uh, risks, the way this was built, and some of the, if something went wrong, um, the grinding rails had sharp edges on them, um, the landing area for the quarter pipe was a retaining wall, um, so it was beyond the risk that w the city could accept. So. Um, um, the city maintenance crew, I think, are still in the process of removing some of that material. And we're removing some of the other things that were from that old miniature golf course that were um, potentially hazardous. Uh, uh, old, um, they put some old boats back there as uh, features in the miniature golf course. And the miniature golf course hasn't been used the entire time I've been here, and I think sometime before that, so it's probably 15 years, the stuff has started to decay. Um, so we're just taking the opportunity to clean that whole area up back there. And there is a um, recreation department does have a master plan for that area that includes a, a little amphitheater, and I believe perhaps some skating area is one of the options for back there. But uh, um, I know it created quite a fuss. <laughs> um, so, is there a, a skate park in the front? Did you say? Yes, is, the city does so have the a kids skate park. Weren't, weren't really happy with that one, apparently. Yes, it um, <laughs> requires um, the wearing of helmets, and ah. uh, you can be observed uh, out there. Um, so, um, sometimes teenagers don't want to be observed. Um, Okay. Well, well, thank you. I just wanted to hear the, the story since I just caught it secondhand. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, let's move on then. Oh, go ahead. On, as on the skate park, are there any other locations that it could possibly be made? The city manager mentioned that um, perhaps it might be a, a good spot, might be next to the existing bike park, but we would need to negotiate some land with uh, PG&E because they pretty much own all the land that surrounds the um, um, existing um, bike park area. So um, the city manager is talking with PG&E about that. Uh, Possibility so I'd have those uh, two um, kind of active um, um, park areas right next to each other. Would it be um, more cost effective to find a way to uh, put together a teen council to work with the city and find ways to modify the existing skate park in front of the teen center to be more? Uh, it it could you be. Know, yeah. um, I Track believe the um, Recreation Commission does have or has had um, teen liaison members. <laughs> and when our new recreation coordinator gets on board, we can talk about um, those ideas uh, to bring forward. Okay. 
A good idea. <laughs> Okay, let's move on uh, to item B2. This is the status report on the Highway 1 uh, Route 41 interchange, and we're looking forward to hearing what you have to tell us. And Rick will be um, leading us through this little presentation and then open it up for questions. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Chair, board members. Um, before we get started, I, I would just also like to point out that another item that was on the uh, director's report and we had staff's really excited about the fact that we did receive the $236,000 of uh, reallocated CDBG funding from the Board of Supervisors. And uh, so staff is currently scurrying about uh, uh, trying to award uh, a new delivery order to repair existing sidewalks that have uh, been lifted by a lot of tree roots around town. I know we all have our sp favorite spot that uh, needs to be fixed, and so we're going to hit a lot of those uh, here in, in uh, throughout the, the month of July. Uh, then we'll be gearing up uh, uh, for another delivery order for about uh, sixty-eight thousand dollars worth of FY17 CDBG allocation funding that's coming in, uh, and then we'll launch from that right on into another delivery order uh, to uh, obligate this $236,000 that we've got. So uh, during the course of this year, you're going to see about uh, $350,000 worth of uh, sidewalk work here in town. So we're anxious to be able to fill in a lot of those gaps uh, and uh, repair uh, some of the sidewalk that had deteriorated. So with that, I'll, I'll move right on into item B2. Uh, you'll recall that uh, back in October uh, of last year, we briefed you uh, on this project. And uh, I'm prepared to, to run through all the slides if you like, uh, but uh, I thought I, I'd do it rather quickly as just a, a refresher uh, and along the way kind of give you an update of uh, what has transpired since then. So you'll see here in September uh, uh, of 2015, before our meeting, we had uh, met with uh, the Coastal San Luis Unified School District, and uh, they were excited uh, about the prospects of moving forward with uh, a roundabout to improve uh, this interchange. At that point in time, we were still in the throes of uh, finishing up uh, the step two of our intersection control evaluation process. Uh, that Cal <clears throat> excuse me, Caltrans requires uh, as part of uh, our uh, uh, preliminary project preparation. Uh, the intersection, as we all know, is, is very problematic because of the alignment uh, of the ramps uh, with Main Street. There's less than 75 feet between there, and so uh, trying to move traffic through this intersection is, is very, very difficult. We often see backups uh, uh, when there's problems on the grade. It's not unusual for those backups to go all the way out uh, into uh, the junction of the, the ramp itself with the, you know, State Route 1. And uh, that's a big concern to Caltrans. It's not unusual on weekends for us to see lots of backup at Main Street and uh, Highway 41. And, uh, the whole idea of this project is to, to upgrade the interchange so that uh, we can bring it back down to an acceptable level of service. As you can see right now, uh, Main Street and uh, Highway 41 typically uh, operates an ex at an acceptable level of service, uh, which is deemed to be level of service C. Uh, but the problem still uh, lies in, in that ramp that backs up in the morning peaks uh, and then oftentimes during uh, special events uh, in the evening as well. Uh, as, you, as you look at the chart here on the left, you'll see that uh, the uh, condition in, in 2012 or 2020, when we expect to have an improvement done, uh, will deteriorate uh, even further uh, within 10 years 
and that will continue uh, uh, to degrade to a point of level of service F, which nobody can tolerate. Uh, particularly here in Mora Bay, where we're accustomed to what is usually a level of service A, and it's driving anywhere you want with no interruption. Uh, and sometimes we get a level of service B or C, but th that's the rare exception. So you can imagine level of service F, which is uh, your typical LA bumper to bumper. And, and nobody wants to see that kind of scenario. Especially on uh, Highway 41, which is a major gateway into our town for many of our visitors from the Central Valley. Uh, I won't belabor the project background. You'll, you'll recall that we did uh, initiate this investigation as early as uh, 2001 uh, as part of work that uh, uh, occurred when Duke was considering upgrading the power plant. Uh, that project moved forward, uh, had the environmental document completely drafted, uh, and it was out for review uh, when Duke announced that they were going to pull the project. And uh, shortly thereafter, about 2003, uh, the, the process came to an abrupt halt because of lack of funding uh, and, and a motivating uh, driver to that uh, improvement. We reinitiated this process uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, we've moved forward with step one uh, using our own city uh, development impact fees uh, and uh, receive, received a lot of uh, favorable support from Caltrans in that process. Uh, they liked what they saw uh, from step one and encouraged us to move forward to step two. Um, and we have now concluded step two. Uh, that uh, became uh, somewhat of a belabored process from uh, the last time that we met uh, until uh, about May uh, when we finally did get approval uh, to move forward with the preliminary engineering uh, phase of the project. Uh, the reasons uh, behind uh, that uh, lengthy uh, back and forth from uh, January until May uh, revolved around uh, several design issues. Uh, you'll recall that the original configuration that we presented to you in uh, October uh, was this egg-shaped uh, layout. Uh, that has since changed uh, due to a number of other factors uh, that came into play um, and they are all related to you know making sure that the layout of the roundabout provides adequate sight distance and adequate speeds uh, and turning movements for all vehicles. Uh, I, I would like to take a, a moment before we launch into the details of uh, some of those uh, design issues that we worked through uh, to remind you why uh, we think at a roundabout is the preferred alternative. Uh, and that uh, uh, assumption was borne out uh, through the step two process. Uh, the big key here is that roundabouts are much, much safer than a standard interchange. When you compare uh, intersections that have been converted from a, a standard intersection and, and or traffic signal control to a roundabout, you see about a 37% reduction in overall accidents, 75% reduction in injury accidents, 90% reduction in fatalities, and about 40% reduction in pedestrian incidences. So across the board, it's a safer alternative. Uh, we also see that, you know, if you're crossing a typical intersection, a chance of a pedestrian dying because he's hit by a motor vehicle are typically around 80% uh, at 40 miles an hour. When you look at uh, the typical speeds that you see at, at a normal intersection, uh, that's given a pedestrian about a 40 to an 80% chance of a fatality walking through that interchange or intersection. With a roundabout, the speeds are, are dramatically reduced 
but they're constant. So vehicles are always moving, but at much slower speeds. And so the chance of a serious pedestrian accident is reduced to about 15%, which is very significant. Also, uh, contrary to, to some beliefs, uh, a roundabout is a, a much safer place to travel in a vehicle because the number of conflict points are dramatically reduced. If you look at uh, this diagram, you see that at, at a normal intersection, all those red dots are uh, vehicle points of conflict. And there's typically 32 different points of conflict uh, as you're making those turning movements. Whereas with a roundabout, that's reduced to uh, eight points of conflict. Uh, same for the pet pedestrians. Um, pedestrian conflicts at a normal intersection are 24, uh, but at a roundabout, there's only eight. Uh, that also, the distance that uh, you have to travel on a regular intersection is much wider. Uh, and you've got three directions of turning traffic you know, that you got to look out for. Whereas with a roundabout, you'll cross a lot more quickly and safely because you're always only crossing one directional uh, travel. It's a single lane, and it's always coming in, in the direction that uh, you know that it's going to come. There. Uh, you'll also don't have to worry about how fast those vehicles are coming because they've got to slow down. Uh, typically below 20 miles an hour. Uh, and the entry speeds that we're looking at uh, with our roundabout here uh, would be down below 15 miles an hour. So that's a, a great thing for our students that use this intersection a lot. Uh, you also have to only look in that one direction of travel because it's always a one-way movement. Uh, the islands are wide enough that they provide shelter uh, in between. Uh, the turning and the, and the through movements. Uh, you also, the, the landscaping provides buffers and, uh, and helps direct those pedestrians. I don't know if you've ever been at uh, Main Street and Highway 41 at lunchtime right now, but uh, it can be a real circus with kids going in every different direction. This is going to channelize that, and uh, I think you'll see a significant improvement. Uh, it also uh, guides the crossings uh, for the, uh, the crossings are guided for the visually impaired as well. So there's uh, some ADA benefits to this. Uh, it's also a better solution for bicycles. Uh, when traffic is light on a roundabout, then uh, you can just use the normal lane of travel. You see the green dotted line moving through the intersection with no conflict at all. Uh, if it gets a bit more busy and the, the cyclist feels uncomfortable, uh, then he can use the shared pathway that you see in the, in the red dotted line uh, and then cross as a pedestrian at the crossing and then resume his bike travel as he gets to the other side. So all in all, the roundabout is a much better solution for everybody traveling this intersection. Uh, trucks, pedestrians, bikes, and, and standard vehicles. Now to those issues that we dealt with uh, from January to May. As you can see, uh, our roundabout has changed shape somewhat. Uh, and one of the principal drivers behind that was the lack of adequate distance between the existing overpass and the intersections uh, that we'll have with the ramp and Main Street. And so what we did was uh, reconfigure the roundabout. Uh, you see it's kind of a lopsided egg now. <laughs> uh, we moved it uh, a little bit to the southwest. Uh, we made a more abrupt turn for the ramp and a much more abrupt turn for eastbound traffic on 41. Uh, the reason for that is by reducing uh, the vehicle speeds as they enter into the roundabout, it increases uh, that reaction time for the vehicles that are coming from the ramp uh, where we had inadequate sight distance. And so we've resolved the problem there. Uh, we also had some concerns 
about uh, the sunset left turn. And so we've extended uh, the uh, median at that point in time so that uh, sunset will be a, a right in and a right out movement only. Uh, people that want to uh, go to Atascadero from sunset uh, can still easily do that by just uh, making the loop around the roundabout and heading back in the other direction. Uh, and I think uh, without question they'll find that it's a lot easier to do that than it is to fight their way through the queue of traffic that's there already. Um, a couple of unresolved, well one other issue that, that we were able to resolve was the turning radius for truck traffic onto the northbound on-ramp uh, was also problematic. And so you see that we've changed the configuration of that entry so that it's a, a more direct approach from the roundabout into that ramp. And so that works very well for, for the very large trucks that will move through that area. So the two unresolved issues that uh, Caltrans has said, well, we're satisfied with the progress you're making. We can see there's some significant design effort involved in, in uh, getting to a complete solution. So we'll defer that until the preliminary engineering phase and uh, allow you to address it at that point in time. And that has to do with uh, the trucks coming off of the ramp that might want to go south on Main Street. Now, that's probably a very few vehicles uh, because most trucks that uh, want to go into downtown uh, are going to get off at the ramp before that, uh, at the Main Street ramp, and get off. But there may be a few trucks that uh, are servicing uh, Mission Linen and also a couple of the restaurants. Uh, and so we're going to accommodate them. Uh, again by this change in configuration, but we'll need to come up with some unusual signing uh, to route them around the roundabout and then back in uh, southbound on Main Street. And those two issues will be resolved, as I say, during the preliminary engineering. So the next step is to, to move forward into preliminary engineering, and in order to do that, we have to go through a very uh, formal and vigorous process of selecting our uh, design consultant and our environmental consultant. Uh, we've put out an RFP to do that. Uh, that RFP is, is uh, moving forward. It's been on the streets since uh, the 12th of July. Uh, questions on the RFP were due today, or excuse me, due Monday. Uh, and we did not receive any questions. Uh, we're going to publish uh, an addendum uh, with some revisions to uh, our contract language that the city attorney has provided for us. And uh, we'll be releasing that before the end of the week so that everybody has the benefit of that information. We'll also provide uh, one more uh, environmental study that... Uh, we've received that uh, demonstrates that there is no uh, sensitive uh, plant life uh, within the project area, and so we don't think that will be an, an issue that needs to be addressed either. So uh, with our environmental uh, documentation, what we find is that of uh, the 16 different elements that will be required to be studied, uh, about uh, five or six of those have already been adequately addressed in the previous study. Uh, Eleven other elements will need to be updated, of course, and uh, we'll be moving out smartly to do that as soon as we can award the RFP. Uh, to do that, we'd, we'd like to solicit uh, the PWAB support uh, if it will fit someone's schedule that's interested in, in joining us in uh, reviewing all the proposals that come in. Uh, they're due on uh, Tuesday, August the 2nd. Uh, we've given ourselves uh, a very limited amount of time, just a week, to wade through those propo proposals and uh, select uh, two to three folks that we'd like to interview. Um, and then those interviews will occur on uh, Tuesday the 9th. 
uh, the panel will uh, score those interviews and uh, make a recommendation on the best qualified uh, at that point in time. Uh, we'll try to put word out that day or early the next morning on uh, who we feel the best qualified is and, and ask them to put together uh, their cost proposal and uh, come back uh, for negotiations starting on the 12th. Uh, uh, we're hopeful that we can negotiate those terms and conditions and the, the final uh, scope of work uh, in four days so that uh, we've got a recommendation to bring back to our next PWAB meeting on the 17th of August. And uh, hopefully that'll put you in a position to make a recommendation to council. Uh, we'll take the uh, ward recommendation to them on the 23rd of August. Uh, hopefully execute that contract by the 30th and be ready to work by September 1. So with that, are there any questions? Uh, yes, and before I get to uh, let, allow everyone to ask questions, I just w wanted to ask you, the person that you're looking for from PWAB that, to participate in the interviews, do they require any specific kind of knowledge? Well, familiarity with the uh, proposal process is always helpful. No, I mean, I, uh, I guess I'm thinking, do you need an engineer? No, that's not, <laughs> that's not required. It's not, yes. Because before I asked for volunteers, I thought we should at least find out what, they, what kind of knowledge and skills they need to possess in order to contribute. So It's certainly not necessary. You need to be able to, to read quickly and, and uh, be available uh, and uh, to come in with an open mind and uh, uh, lots of questions so that we can uh, get a good evaluation of the folks that okay. we're working with. Thank you. All right, well, let's... Uh, Let me, I just want to say yeah, one last... Before sure. you go to questions, yeah. just this process may be a little bit different from um, other proposals that we have reviewed in the past uh, or that you may have been involved in. We're not... We can't ask for a price uh, um, as part of the proposal process. So um, in California, um, we select professional services based on the most qualified, and then you negotiate scope and fee. So we're looking for the most qualified, and then you ne make your negotiations um, afterwards. So um, as part of the proposal, you will, will, it's not a bid. Um, it is a um, uh, request for proposal process and uh, we'll be uh, seeking the most qualified consultant. And the way this process works, I've been involved in a few of these, is um, you receive their proposal, you pick the consultant that is the most qualified, and then you sit down and look at what the scope they're proposing, and then they'll add dollar amounts to that scope, and they'll slide a number across the table, not really, but um, uh, they'll show you their Excel spreadsheet, how they came up with their fees. And it, that goes back and forth a couple of times because usually it's more than you can spend on that, those services. I've never had one come in that's less than you expected. Um, and let's say it doesn't work out, you can't come to terms. Well, then you go down to the next most qualified firm on the list and you start negotiating scope and fee with them. Okay. I've never seen where you've had to go back out and re-advertise okay. and try to start So you start expect uh, more than one, obviously. You, uh... I, I expect this is a very attractive size project for um, multiple um, civil transportation type firms. Okay. All right. Okay, let's uh, move to questions. Stu, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I just got some questions, Rick, on what you have up there. Our current roundabout is on 80. Well, the current roundabout. Excuse me. Our current roundabout that's on Maine and Quintana. Uh, have you got an idea of how many vehicle trips uh, are going through that current location? And secondly, how does the size of that uh, compare with what we have here? You know, I have not looked at actual numbers there for a long time. I would, I would guess it's probably around 12, 14,000 vehicles a day. That's probably pretty close from what I recall from the traffic studies, yeah. Yeah, 
and there's there's 7,800 vehicle trips up and down 41. Am I am I right with that one? That, that's pretty, oh, yeah, pretty close. Then we've got, well. we got the influx of, of Main, Main Street, Street and the ramps. going around there and so on. So it's conceivable that that's going to be a load of, that's similar to what uh, very similar meaning or Morro Bay and Quintana is. Um, is there any plans in this to close the southwest pedestrian crossing there? I know I travel out all the time and almost bumped into some kids several times that are the last minute jumping out there and just have one on the, uh, would be the northwest travel. No, in, in fact, uh, Caltrans was quite adamant as we went through the process uh, that we needed to provide pedestrian access on all four quadrants. Uh, we thought it might be uh, more advantageous uh, to try to channel it to one side as well. Uh, but their experience has been uh, that uh, it will work much more effectively if we've got access all the way around. And uh, of course, we're gonna accede to their wishes. And remember, we, pedestrians are only crossing one l lane of traffic at a, at a time. It's not, you're not crossing both directions. You have that pedestrian refuge um, before you take the next uh, um, leap of faith. And I would, would also point out, too, that uh, uh, you see the crosswalk locations are going to change pretty significantly as well. So it, it will likely be relocated uh, to a much different location now. I, I know that the college students on, on one down there by the uh, Shell Station dare you to hit them. And I almost hit one the other day. It was close. But the, uh, they have that, they don't kind of look to see if there's any traffic and so on coming. Do you see that a roundabout improves their uh, attitude or their visibility to look for traffic since it's a little less well it, it certainly does i mean if you if you look at this layout here which is a little bit busy because we've noted some areas uh, uh, where we've made some changes with the highlighting but the the dark blue delineates where all of those crossings are going to be and as you can see we move them out away from uh, their current locations uh, so that uh, they can find refuge in those center islands uh, as well. And so they're not going to be tra traveling uh, nearly as great a distance as they do right now, which should greatly speed things up. In this process, is there any plans to change where uh, one comes into Maine, where there's that right turn only stop sign, I mean a road direction sign? coming off of one going north and you pull up to that stop sign and you can go left or right on ma on the uh, main street that's correct that sign is right smack in the blocking of what traffic is coming and it seems to me like there needs to be some some redoing of, of and, that well you and just, that's at it, the ramp south of here about uh Quarter mile south of here, south of there, yeah, yeah. at uh, where right where the bike park is. Right? Yeah, right, yeah, right where the okay. bike park is, and and they, uh, it gets pretty crazy there sometimes. I've sat there for ten or fifteen minutes, and stupid me, I should have gone on down, and but uh, uh, that needs to be addressed too in this in this process because there may be more load on that uh, when the roundabout gets going. Well, I, actually, I would would expect that you'd probably see less of a load at that intersection itself because uh, a lot of people use that only to avoid the backup on, on the ramp at 41. And if that backup goes away like we expect it to, uh, then it should reduce that. That's true. 18-wheelers uh, would be able to negotiate around that if they wanted to come in and then go maybe maybe north on Main. And That's correct. This configuration is set up so that uh, uh, the largest uh, California vehicle can traverse it. You'll, you'll notice that uh, there's uh, two concentric circles there in the middle. What that denotes is uh, uh, the rollover curb there so that the tra rear tracking of the, the uh, truck's wheels 
uh, can roll up over that and get on around. Um, did I hear the length of time is going to be three or four years if it if it go if it flies and gets approved? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, let me just move forward here. Uh, this is our our rough uh, schedule right now. Uh, you'll see that we are, are somewhat uh, delayed in our start. We really thought that we'd uh, be into P and E uh, in probably March time frame, and and that hasn't occurred because of these design issues. But uh, we think we can make that time up and and pretty closely adhere to this schedule. Of course, we'll get a brand new schedule uh, when we negotiate the final scope with the, the most qualified. But the, the, the plan is to be uh, what Caltrans calls ready to list. That means uh, you've got a complete set of plans, all the right of ways are acquired, and uh, you're ready to go out to bid uh, by uh, late 2018 so that we can get started uh, uh, in spring of 2019. Spring, summer, I should say. We may wait for the Transportation Commission meeting. So there's going to be alternate route signs, of course, put up. Uh, because when you start constructing there... Uh, oh, the, yeah, there, there will be a complete traffic control plan uh, for this project, without a doubt. Yeah, because a lot of our lot of our commerce comes down to forty one. That's correct. That's right. That's all I have. Chris, um, I I really like the idea the roundabout there. My only concern really is the pedestrian, the quantity of pedestrian activity there, and obviously at certain times of day, but also obviously lunchtime. That's probably when we're getting a decent amount of vehicles coming through as well. From what I've seen there, they tend to cluster up in groups and go and then. You get ready to go through a stop sign, all of a sudden they, another group starts walking. Um, when I encounter pedestrians up here at our other roundabout, it tends to bring things to somewhat of a stop. I can see that really bringing stuff to a stop at lunchtime there. And has that kind of been looked at? Because once you get a couple cars backed up, the circle doesn't work. Typically what you see is, is exactly what I alluded to earlier. With the refuge islands there, You'll see those groups moving out before, instead of accumulating, I think you'll see the, the onesies, twosies get started. So you'll see those groups moving across in a staggered fashion. So you'll have two or three waiting at uh, uh, the edge of uh, the first entry, while another three or four might already be out in the island. And so they you don't have to wait for them to move all the way across both lanes of traffic. And so. Yeah, should and I, be I think much more efficient. I think that's the key, because I think kind of what Stu alluded to, which is what I see, they don't tend to wait. Um, they tend to just walk out and not look kind of on purpose so that they can get across as quick as possible. Um, my only other question, what were those dates again that you were looking for on the for the interview? Okay, the, we're looking to do the, uh, we're re receiving the proposals on the 2nd, uh, and we'll do the interviews on the 9th. So, uh, the busy time for our, our volunteer would be from uh, the uh, third through uh, the ninth. Ninth is a Tuesday. That's is correct. That, okay. And nothing, nothing past the ninth for that. Uh, that's correct. Okay. You, you wouldn't need to be involved in the cost negotiations at all. Okay, Jan. Uh, yeah, could we go back to the drawing of it, please? That's sure. like, um, okay, right now, if you come down a Tascadero Road heading toward the beach, say, and if you got on that roundabout, you'd go on the Tascadero Road, you'd go around across Main Street, right? That's correct. And if you wanted to get on Highway 1, is that... That that on ramp is obviously moved because right now it would be like a ninety degree turn. That's so, correct. So, so the, is the that on ramp, that the on ramp is is moved uh, up to about the eleven o'clock position there. Okay. Then, has there ever been any any uh, thought about maybe eliminating the on and off ramp there and directing it maybe to 
San Jacinto or down on uh, Main Street? Down? Uh, Instead of having all those streets in one place? Yeah, it, it, Caltrans is, is not receptive to that approach. I mean, you, you know, from their perspective, this is the intersection of two major highways. Uh, and so to try to route that traffic uh, across the city street and then back to another city street mm -hmm. to get back on would, would not be an efficient way to, to move the volumes of traffic that they need to move there. Uh, we did have some discussion about the feasibility of closing the ramp uh, at Main Street, that, that extra loop, uh, because there is some redundancy there. But again, they, they felt like, particularly because of the truck turning radius here, that it was important to leave that in play. Has there ever been any thought about maybe making a different route for the kids to get across there? I don't know how. Maybe over the freeway, a uh, walkway over or something? A tunnel, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you, no. Uh, parachute drops. We, right. we really feel like the roundabout is going to provide the solution that we're looking for here. Okay. Uh, the, again, the, the volumes of pedestrians that we see in Morro Bay, while they, uh, that's certainly our, our largest concentration of pedestrians, uh, it pales in comparison to most other places. Chris. Um, yeah, I, this is quite an undertaking. I mean, that thing has more legs than the Kraken. So um, <laughs> congratulations on the amount of work and rework that you've done on this. And um, I do see what you're saying in regard, again, to pedestrians. Um, compared to the roundabout over on Morro Bay Boulevard, the crossing for pedestrians there is much closer to the actual circular drive itself, mm -hmm. where here you've, you've moved them back substantially. So once more cars get, are able to get past the pedestrian, the flow, I can see how that would, you know, hope alleviate too much backup. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't have any real questions uh, beyond the fact that I, I feel like you guys have worked this in every direction possible and, and seems to be coming into the most effective plan available so nice work um, well I do have a couple questions uh, <laughs> uh, first of all um, we the last time that we uh, heard this issue you were pursuing two alternative designs and now as I am um, hearing you talk it sounds like you have already made a decision to go with the roundabout and no, that's not correct at all. Okay. What, what we have uh, concluded is that the roundabout is the preferred alternative for many reasons. Right. We still have the environmental process to go through, and, and in that environmental process, we need to consider the alternatives, and, and we are. Okay. So it, moving into the next phase, uh, will the uh, consultant hired be doing preliminary uh, engineering plans for both the, the signal and the roundabout? Normally, the uh, preliminary engineering piece of the environmental documentation is more focused on the preferred alternative, but there will be uh, some basic configuration of the signal alternative. The challenge, of course, that uh, it is uh, the elephant in the room it is, you know, how do you really move traffic efficiently as close as those intersections are? Well, you don't have to convince me, yeah. but uh, it's, <laughs> it's the rest of the citizens of yeah. Morro Bay that I'm actually considering at this sure. point. Uh, and at some point, they need to weigh in on this, and I'm just wondering when that would happen in the process. So that will happen as it moves through the environmental process. It'll um, not only come to PWAP, but it'll come to um, Planning Commission. Uh, Planning Commission will weigh in on the um, most likely a mitigated negative deck, um, probably not an EIR because there's not that many issues um, with it. Um, also, well, the first step to weigh in is will council authorize the um, to move forward with awarding the contract for mm -hmm. um, the uh, preliminary design environmental review. Next step, if that 
if that hurdle is passed, would be um, that work goes to Planning Commission and then to City Council for their approval of the project. Um, there's probably a couple more steps along the way because we'll have to award a construction contract and uh, um, a couple of other things. Come up with some money, too. Uh, well, that was going to be my <laughs> next question. Um, we have the, the uh, slow cog sales tax that will be on the ballot, and let's hope that it passes. But if it doesn't, what does that do to this project? It requires that the city provide the lion's share of the match and Slowcog and Caltrans are expecting 50% match funding and this is a very expensive project. Either signalization or roundabout are both expensive multi-million, four plus million dollar projects. So, so is this a, the appropriate time to move forward? Uh, with this phase of the project, or would it be better to wait until we find out about the results of the, of the uh, ballot? I, I think we need to continue to move forward because we do have um, funding for this next portion of it, I um, outside funding, okay. that will go away um, okay. if, well, we then don't, you can, uh, <laughs> if we don't continue forward. And it puts us in the position is um, when funding is available, we'll have, I hate this term, a shovel-ready project. Yes. Um, because, um, as has been pointed out to me, you, you never know when somebody else is going to drop out because they can't deliver a project, and there may be money left on the table from other projects that we can scoop up. Which um, is exactly what we just did with the sidewalks. Uh -huh. And we did with our bridge project. Uh -huh. um, uh, Bob Jones Trail wasn't ready to move forward. Um, we had a pedestrian bike project that was. Um, we took the money for Bob Jones Trail. They're getting more money now, but. Uh. <laughs> okay, thank you. And I, and I have had people talk to me about the issue of the high school students crossing there. Uh, it's obviously a concern to some people, but it sounds like you've done outreach with the school, uh, uh, the high school. Could you just describe exactly what you've done in that regard? So who has reviewed it? Uh, have parents reviewed it in addition to the administration? We did not formally do a presentation for uh, the, the teachers or, or the, either the teachers or the parents, uh, but we did meet with the facility director and the principal. Uh, they assured us that it had been topics of discussion at other meetings uh, with those groups and that there was strong support. And, and it, in fact, their, their only impatience was in why we couldn't do it faster. <laughs> Okay, thank they, you. They did express concerns of the project, um, yeah. and their concerns are pedestrian related, not with the official way that people are supposed to get across a roundabout, but the potential for trailblazers um, that you might want to run diagonally across the center of the roundabout. So their design feature that they're after is something to make it not not just to have a flat piece of concrete out there that's easy to run across. And typically you wouldn't design a roundabout like that that's uh, easy to cut across the center. Most of them have um, a low wall, a mound some there, maybe a statue, uh, some landscaping in the middle of it. Um, because Spikes. you don't need to see all the way through the intersection. All you need to do is look to the left, drive to the right. That's my roundabout driving tip for the day. Right, right. Uh, and this is my last question. Uh, I had heard talk that there was a, a hamburger place going in on that corner. Is that going to impact this in any way, shape, or form? We've actually worked very closely with the developer uh, as he's moved through the process, and we've kept him informed of uh, the development of our plans as, as they move forward. And so uh, no surprises for him. Okay, all right. And their design accommodate, their complementary design, uh, so they understand that the intersection needs to be improved. They shifted their driveways to um, make it work for them and for us. Okay. Good. Actually improves their access, I think. Ah, without, okay, good, thank question. you. <laughs> all right, and, well, um, I guess I should see who, which one of us wants to volunteer to... Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'd be available to. to you would be available to do that, all yes. right? 
Anybody else want to? <laughs> we have, you can fight for it or no, I, arm I'd wrestle? I'd like to, but I will be out of town, unfortunately. I would have been happy to do it if nobody else wanted to, but <laughs> as long as we've got a volunteer, why don't we take Chris? Great. Okay. Um, well, that concludes our business portion of the meeting. Um, I, I see the future agenda items. I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, do you know when the Joint Street Summit is going to be um, scheduled with the City Council? No, we don't have a um, um, date for that yet. And the City Manager is thinking that um, he wants it to be more of, instead of a Brown Act meeting, a more of a public workshop where I people don't that, have yeah. to um, come up and come have up three and, minutes. Yeah. Well, have three minutes. You can yeah. still come up <laughs> and speak and ask your questions until you have no more questions. We've done that on the WERF project before, and I think right. it uh, created a better dialogue. Um, so it would be, you know, uh, the council and PWAB and any other other advisory boards would attend, of course. But it wouldn't be run. It wouldn't be run right. as an official uh, meeting. And then we'd take the results of that and bring it back through the. Uh, more of the formal okay. um, setting. It struck me that the Citizens Finance Committee should be invited to participate also because yeah. I know that the funding issue is going to come up. Right. <laughs> um, and so would it not, it would not necessarily be on our regular scheduled. Correct, correct. It'll just be it, some... Sometime after Labor Day is when we're um, okay. um, uh, thinking of it when this hubbub of summer have kind of calmed down a little bit okay. and uh, more folks are either in town or um, getting back into their routine after um, the summer. And okay. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, and as soon as there's a date, I would love to know it. Oh, yeah. yeah. We will make sure that that yeah. gets broadcast <laughs> widely. Also, I, I think what we should do is... Um, and I'll do this on future um, agendas, is attach the work plan that we had based on our last joint meeting, because um, yes. otherwise we might forget about some of those items. And we I need brought to it keep... with me. Okay, and we need to keep those <laughs> I'll moving keep forward. You up. <laughs> okay. Very good. Uh, well, uh, any closing comments from anybody? Just no? before you do wrap things up, you had uh, the question about the funding, and I would just point out that if anybody is interested in, in a better understanding of what the self-help initiative would mean to this project and to the city of Morro Bay in general, that there is a website uh, available to them. Uh, it's uh, selfhelpslow.org. And uh, they'll f they would find there that uh, this particular project has been uh, designated for a million dollar allocation as part of uh, uh, the regional projects. Thank you, Rick. That's very helpful. Uh, well, I wanted to just say goodbye to Kay. I, <laughs> I heard that Kay is going to be leaving us, and I just wanted to say thank you for all of the work you put in for us, and we've appreciated it, and I wish you well in the future. We'll miss you. <laughs> and with that, we're adjourned until our next regularly scheduled meeting, which is August 17th, uh, 530 right here. So we're adjourned. <laughs>